astronauts have demonstrated the same thing when they drink liquids in microgravity. Instead of flowing evenly, the liquids separate into a series of spheres. But there is one system that would work well for keeping away the bad guys in space. Launching bullets with a rail gun. Rail guns use a series of strong magnetic fields rather than gunpowder to propel bullets. Current railgun projectiles can already race down range about three times faster than a bullet from an M16 rifle. The idea of a railgun is you take a small pellet that's uh, maybe metal, it may be plastic, maybe whatever, but you have to have, uh, have it wrapped in aluminum foil because you complete an electric circuit between two long rails and the magnetic field created uh, accelerates that little pellet out the end of the rails and it can accelerate it very fast up to uh, uh, some people believe close to the speed of light. Similar systems are at work in certain bullet trains and roller coasters. We have a series of magnets and the magnets propel an object, either a roller coaster car or this giant slug of a bullet you want to use to hit something in space, from one to the other, accelerating as it goes. And by the time it's reached a certain number of uh, accelerators, a certain number of pairs of magnets, it's really going as fast as you need it to go. Mounted on a large spacecraft, the railgun could become the naval cannon of the future. Long rows of powerful magnets could propel big projectiles to millions of miles an hour. But would that kind of gun be enough to take out an alien civilization before it could destroy Earth? A hundred years from now, spaceships at war may blast away with ultra-high-speed rail guns that destroy targets without explosives. Just by slamming into the enemy at many thousands or even millions of miles an hour, they'll release incredible amounts of kinetic energy, the energy of motion. In 2008, the US Navy tested the most powerful rail gun that now exists. Using a series of magnets and strong electrical currents, it launched a seven pound projectile at over 5,000 miles an hour. The gun's estimated range when fully operational will be 200 miles. A slug moving at seven times the speed of sound does a lot of damage. It's one of those things where you're glad it's on our side. It's the kind of weapon that could really do some damage to the capital city of a violent alien civilization. You can envision the big mothership having a rail gun that runs along the periphery from one end to the other, and it could shoot a very large projectile like the size of a car or a bulldozer that you could then accelerate on that rail gun, maybe 10%, 20% speed of light. And that much kinetic energy could likely destroy the whole city. I mean, that's a lot of energy. But such an advanced rail gun is obviously a long way off. So are there any kinetic energy weapons that could come to space in the near future? Remember the telephone pole-sized rod pummeling the underground bunker in our moon battle set a hundred years from now? Well, that weapon, known as a rod from God, is simple enough that it could show up if a war comes to space in the next few decades. A small rocket boost would get the aerodynamic rod started. basically just a big metal rod and it'd probably be something like tungsten or, or some really strong and heavy metal that uh, you can put in orbit and drop it onto the uh, wherever you want whatever the target is and from space and just let gravity accelerate the thing Gravity's ability to speed up an object and increase its destructive power can be seen in a weapon from centuries past. The trebuchet, which is a type of catapult, used to rain down destruction from on high. Gravity acts upon an object like this rock at a rate of 10 meters per second squared, roughly 
30 feet per second squared. So if we take it and drop it, it's fallen for less than a second, has not come close to reaching 30 feet per second. But take that same rock, launch it with the trebuchet, higher, further, it will have a chance to accelerate to 30 feet per second, 60 feet in the second second, 90 feet in the third second. When it hits, it'll leave a much bigger crater. This rock traveled through the air for about five seconds, which means that by the time it hit, it was traveling close to or around 150 feet per second. And with that added kinetic energy, it left a much bigger crater. In the battle 100 years from now, the rod launched at the moon has an advantage over the rock from the trebuchet on Earth. Since the moon doesn't have any atmosphere, the rod keeps accelerating until it impacts the underground command post of the separatist colony. It burrows into the moon rock and destroys the command post. But what if the separatists on the moon return the favor and launch a rod from a space platform at Earth? Earth's atmosphere will slow the rod, but will it be enough to prevent a knockout blow to an underground headquarters on Earth? When it hits the upper atmosphere, it's doing about Mach 25, 25 times the speed of sound. It slows down as it comes down through the atmosphere, but if it were to hit the Earth, it would bore way down in there because it's going to hit at like 5,000, 7,000 miles per hour. So the amount of energy that's dumped in a very small space in a very short amount of time is equivalent to a small nuclear weapon. Something like this would have a lot of, of penetrating power and would be the ultimate bunker buster. But as impressive as the speeds of rods from God and railgun projectiles are, nothing can compete with a laser speed, the 186,000 miles per second speed of light. Lasers have always been the favorite weapon of science fiction space battles. The idea of having a personal laser is just fascinating and attractive. I would have loved one at the age of 12 myself. It's the same way that kids sometimes want to be cowboys and gunslingers. Uh, there's something very fun about the idea of uh, having a, a weapon that is quick, painless, instantaneous, and makes you uh, the, 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 the toughest SOB in the valley. But what exactly is a laser? Lasers can be thought of as sort of a high-tech flashlight. But all the waves are in phase, so you've got all the wave crests lining up. So that makes the radiation really intense for a given amount of power. See, normal light from a flashlight or from the sun is all out of phase. It's incoherent. Some wave crests are like this, the wave troughs of other waves are like that. They tend to largely cancel out. And what you see is the leftover parts that didn't cancel out. Most visible light laser beams appear as a certain color, since only the light in that specific color frequency is lined up and coming out of the chamber. And different types of lasers can damage targets in different ways. This green light laser at Stanford University's High Power Laser Lab pulses on and off in powerful bursts. It's actually not delivering a lot of heat. What it is, though, is a very strong electric field. And this one can provide a, a strong enough electric field. By creating a high electric field, you can rip apart atoms. You can rip electrons off of atoms if you wish. And you can break down materials. The strong electrical field even rips apart air molecules. They come back together between each pulse. And that's when you get this flash. That's when the energy comes out and you see the light. And you get the report that way, much like thunder and lightning. 